All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So for the first time in a long time, we're going to do a little ball test, ball Matty te boy. Not just a ball test, a Bridgestone ball test. Absolutely. Those are uh, few and far between on very the TXG rare. YouTube channel. It has been very rare over the years. It has, it has. Um, not really sure how these turned up at our, on our doorstep. Yes. We were talking about earlier on. Maybe, you know, we have requested Bridgestone balls in the past and uh, it's fallen in deaf ears, but not with the E12 contact. They must be excited about this one, yeah, because we got a three dozen delivery the other day and we're ready to test them. Very excited to test them. Um, some sort of interesting claims, uh, very unique design when you look at it closely in the dimple pattern, Matty, this forced dimple pattern. Um, you know, dual dimples are not are not uncommon. We've seen dual dimples, dimples inside dimples before. Yeah. Um, but this this kind of raised area, raising the, the base of the, the dimple, um, obviously to create more contact, that's that's going to be your, your kind right. of punchline here is more contact with the club face, producing more energy, mm. more friction, you know, better perform. Most of the things that really we, we look for. And, and a lot of these balls often they'll, they'll be advertised to be straight flying, yeah. but maybe around the greens they don't spin quite as much. Right. And so maybe that extra contact helps with the wedges, yeah. keep it on the face a little bit longer? P potentially so, uh, and, and that's and that's what you know we're going to be searching for today. And at, at the price point that it is, there, uh, 30 bucks yeah. USD. Um, we're going to compare it to a, a ball that maybe someone in a similar kind of budget you know, range would be looking at, which is the, the Titleist Tour Speed. We were going to do Pro-V, but thought, well, that's just a different ball. It's a different it? ball. I think these, well, they're the same construction. They're still three pieces. Yeah. The Tour Speed doesn't have quite the same style of dimple, obviously, because this is pretty unique. Yeah. But I think it's aimed at a similar player. I think the idea is that the, the golf ball is exceptionally straight off the driver. Yeah. And it, it has a, an adequate, if not more than adequate, amount of spin with the wedges yeah. at a price point that is very affordable. That would make it a great ball, wouldn't it? That would it? make it a good ball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's start with a few uh, few 50 half wedges, 50 yarders. That was nice, Matty boy. Crisp one. Yes. Nice. Mm, that was nice. Struck that one lovely. That was nice, Matty. Nice flavour of pink there for you there, Matty boy. It's good. It's nice. Oh, is that low spin? Nuclear. Hmm, that was lovely. It's lower spin for sure.
That's good. Oh, that's so good. Yes, good. It's good. Can't hit that any better. Nope, 72. <laughs> I love that so much. Instantly. Yeah. Oh yeah. 74. 74. Yep. You at eight. Hello. Okay, uh, Matty, good little test. Mm. Um, some nice little talking points showed up there. Definitely. There were some similarities. Um, there were some subtle differences. So starting with a 50 yard half wedge shot, very similar in, in speed uh, when we got it to go the same distance. Basically, the output from the golf ball was the same. We did find that the tour speed was launching a little higher and spinning a little more. We could probably attribute some of that to some strike and some delivery. And I think so. I yeah. think if you did this test three or four more times, you may find these kind of average out pretty similar. Definitely. Um, but one thing we will, you know, we can say is that as the test wore on and you know, we started to see the tour speed was a higher spin ball. Definitely. Right. And uh, so there they, they flipped around a little bit. So mm -hmm. the spin as expected pulled the, the flight down a little bit. Um, speed remained about the same when we got it to go the same, the same number, same yardage. Um, so not noticeable, but a little more stopping power with the Titleist. Yeah, and the E12 would be good for someone that maybe balloons their irons. Definitely. It, it launched a bit higher and it spun a bit less, so yeah. it would get through the wind nicely too. I was thinking at certain points of, of even like a, 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 a budget test. Yes. Like no budget versus budget, AVX versus E12. Like mm. I, that's kind of what it looked like it was shaping out to for me. Good point. Uh, in my mind. Because it did spin reasonably well on a partial wedge. Over yeah. 7,000 is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. And, and really this is where I thought of it here because we got some, some yeah. really funky numbers with the Bridgestone. I mean, it was a rocket off the uh, irons. On the mid iron, yeah. And this is where these tests become so interesting because you and I have seen this many times. Soft golf balls, are pretty quick on irons. Yes. They really are. They can be very jumpy on irons and they can make your irons go a long, long way. 127 with a seven iron, launch is nice and high, spin is exceptionally low, and you're flying your seven iron 190. Crazy. That's not for everyone. No. Sometimes I believe that when people talk about irons and loft jacking and things, I think what they're missing is the golf ball they play is mm. contributing a lot towards the, the outcome of the, of the kind of knuckle ball. Maybe and even more so. Yeah, yeah. It, it could be making it, you know, and it might be a combo of both, mm. but I do believe there's too much uh, emphasis placed on it's all the irons fault. Yeah. Love jacking's bad, it's, you know, wrong, it's the devil. Yeah. Right, it's not. Because this was a very traditionally lofted seven iron I was using, and you can see how Absolutely. low spin that ball comes exactly. out. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a great point. 34, yeah. uh, 34 degree uh, seven iron. Yeah, but again, for the person who balloons it, they'll probably be looking at that going, okay, well, I need more distance and I hit it too high, so it's a decent choice there. Exactly. So here is why we say, and we made a big fuss there about talking about how quick they are with the irons because when it got to the driver it really neither ball was particularly quick for you yeah so we were looking at it going okay like one mile an hour and at 1.2 miles an hour between them um nice launch characteristics on both actually. they do they launch high and spin low really like you can really hit some... good from from that perspective and, and you know the net result really happy with it yep excellent but when we look at those ball speeds, knowing that you're leaving something on the table, I was curious as to what would happen if we put best in class in there, which for me, the, the fastest golf ball I've ever tested is the Chromesoft XLS. Yes. Um, and when we threw that in the mix, basically at the same speed, you were significantly quicker. Yeah, I mean, five miles an hour over one and six over the other is no joke. That's a lot. 
So I think a lot of people will look at this and go, okay, well, Matt's quite a bit above my average speed. Mm -hmm. Does this apply to me? I think what you should look for is where's the break even point? So obviously the softball on a seven iron, tons of speed. Yeah. So let's say around the 98, you know, club head speed. I think at, at a certain point, maybe, you know, maybe in my hybrid, I would hit them a similar distance. Mm -hmm. And so the person who hits their driver 230 maybe might yeah. find that these balls are fast enough. But I think once you start hitting it 240, 250, 260, mm -hmm. the firmer, like, a, like something like a Chrome Soft LX, uh, will go further, have more ball speed. The end result, when you look at it, you know, I can still hear the argument from the, from the other side, right? You've got, you've got two parties here. You've got one that goes, well, why the heck would I give up five or six miles an hour ball speed? I just wouldn't do that. Wouldn't be prepared for that. Not for the price of a golf ball. Mm. When people, what do people pay for five miles an hour when it comes to a driver? A lot. Thousands. Yeah. It can be thousands. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. But when the net result is very similar, there's there's the other party going. Well, I'm okay with two or 328, and, and actually this one went the furthest, <laughs> even though the carry was a couple less. of knuckleballs. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm okay with that because it's half the price, and you know I, I get that argument too. I really do. I just think ball speed is, in a lot of ways, you know that's the horsepower at which you know you have at your disposal i would always just rather more yeah and you could argue that we could dial in the driver to drop the spin for the chrome soft lx yeah. a bit and maybe that then makes yeah. it a further flying ball but i get i get what you're saying and if we dropped in that ls even though it is a low spin ball it would spin higher on the seven iron by a long way of course it might be it would be over a thousand yeah so it would be better in there less knuckle ball so you've got more speed great balance in the ball flight you know, 13 launch and 2200 is really, really ideal for you. It is, yeah. Um, you would spin the seven iron more and you'd spin the wedge and you'd spin both the wedges more. Yep. That's why this is a premium golf ball. Definitely, and That's, it costs a solid 20 bucks more a box. Absolutely, because yeah. it performs better in every category yep. by a percentage. Is that percentage enough to sway you into, you know, yeah. uh, handing over double the money? Maybe not. That's up to you. And how many people play on fairly soft conditions, not super fast greens and fairways, and they yeah. go, well, I'm looking at all the numbers there. Yeah. The ball's coming in steep enough. It's going to stop for me fine. The driver's going far enough, yeah. and I'm going to save 20 bucks a box. Looks good to me. The punchline to me is always when it comes to golf ball testing like this. If you can trust yourself to do your part of the deal, pay the extra, mm. right? Because the golf ball, they make a big difference. Yes. If you can't trust yourself to make the difference every time, yeah. you know, Maybe your contact's a little, you know, scratchy and, and you, you know, you, you catch some clean, but some not. I would probably lean towards the tour speeds and the E12s of the world. Great idea. Because you're, you're kind of a little up and down and, and that's, that contact can be the variable. But if your contact is really solid, you're a good ball striker, pay the extra. So in terms of the force contact uh, on the, or the sort of contact force dimples, mm. probably we, we didn't see something there that would, would um, Nothing crazy. We didn't see anything that shocked us, did we? Or we, no. did we haven't seen before, you know? No, I think it spun respectably on the wedges. Yeah. It certainly didn't make it spin high. I don't mm -hmm. think it's ever going to be a high spin ball. Yeah. I would wonder if those dimples weren't on there, would it spin less? Probably. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it makes it a more playable ball in the spin range. Like 7,000 spin, as we were saying, on a 50-yard mm -hmm. shot is good. It's okay. Yep. Yeah. Other balls maybe in this category that dip below six or yeah. six-ish, that's kind of too low spin. So I would say it's feasible, but it didn't make it spin 8,000 no. all of a sudden. That's for sure. Definitely. And we normally, when we have the dimple conversation, we do say that outside is where yeah. we see this. But the difference is here, this is about friction. You know, so, so yeah. basically shallowing out the dimple with this, with this kind of raised portion, this raised flat portion is to try and get more contact, more surface contact, yeah. which produces more energy, more friction, you know, retain spin. And that's what we're measuring things. here is the moment of impact is where it's that's technology it. applies there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and we didn't, I, I can't say we saw something there that was, that was really uh, stand out in terms no. of performance. No. I think it's a good ball for the price. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't shy anyone away from it unless you are a really low spin player, you'd mm -hmm. want to look elsewhere. You know, this ball's been out for a while. Some of you will have played it. Some of you will be using it and love it. Others may have tried it and went, yeah, it just kind of does the same as mothers. I would love to know. Yeah, tell uh, us. We'd love to know what you guys think. Always, always think your 
reactions are, are the most meaningful thing. You know, our testing is what it is. It's, it's a sample size from one player, but we do think we control the variables enough to give you guys such good information to maybe make some buying decisions when it comes to, you know, ordering a few dozen or whatever it may be that you, you tend to, however you buy your golf balls, whether it's trying different ones or, or you buy them, you know, in bulk, yeah. whatever it may be. So uh, I think there's some useful little nuggets in there anyway. Totally agree. Good stuff. Okay, stay tuned. We'll see you again soon.